So you know how to use the sum function, the if function, and maybe even the vlookup function. Now to take you to that next level, in this video we'll go over not one, not two, but five advanced Excel formulas. And this has taken me years to learn. So let's get into them from easiest to hardest. First up, we've got the text split function, which is actually a new function on Excel. So let's take a look over here. You can see that we've got these names and we want to split them into the first name and the last name. So we might think of just using the text split function. So equals text split. So it's just going to be the name of that person, comma. And for the delimiter here, we actually want to put the space. So we're going to do in quotations, space, close the quotations. So every time there's a space, it's going to put it into a new cell. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. So now we've got the Dr. Fernando Alonso. Then if we go down here by hitting the shift down arrow and control D to drag this down, you'll notice how it's a bit inconsistent because sometimes you have this title, which we don't quite want. And other times you don't like down over here. So we're going to need to make some changes to this function. So at the very top here, what we want to do is add more delimiters. So we're going to add that doctor and that mister. So it also gets filtered out. So over here at the beginning, we're going to actually put this parenthesis, this kind of curvy one, and then comma. This is how we'll be able to add multiple delimiters. So the second one in quotations is doctor dot space, close the quotations, comma. And the third one, you probably guessed it, it's just the mister, space, and close the quotations. So once we have these three, we need to close the parenthesis, so the curvy one, and then just hit on enter. And we can drag this down again with shift down arrow, control D. And now you see that it's looking a bit better, but we have these empty spaces. So luckily within that text split function, we do have an option to ignore those spaces. You can see here it says ignore empty. Now to select that, just hit the comma key and hit it again. And under ignore empty, we want to go for ignore empty cells and just hit on enter. Now, when we drag this down, shift down arrow, control D, it's all looking clean for us. Awesome. That's the first function done. And in the second one, we're going to have a combination of functions. So let's take a look. Over here, we basically want to find out how many days we need to work to make X amount of money because we want to go on holiday maybe. So over here, we calculate the profit that we're going to have based on these down over here. We want this to change. So if I put six days here, I want to see how much money I'll have saved up. And so for this, we're going to do equals sum, hit the tab key there, and we're basically summing the profit. That said, we'll select that first one. But for the second part, we'll put this uh, colon here and just leave it like that because basically we want that second part to be dynamic. It's summing starting here, but it could change depending on the work days. And so to make that adjustment, we're gonna use the offset function. We're basically adding it in here. And the reference for us is gonna be this figure over here as the profit as well. That's kind of where it starts from, comma. And here we're deciding to offset by the number of rows. In this case, we're not offsetting by rows. We're happy with this profit one. So we'll just hit on the comma there. Now under columns, we want to offset by whatever number it says here. So if it says two columns, we want to be able to move two and so on. So we're going to put the six there. So just select that work days. And then this is the tricky part where it actually starts on the next one after the one you're referencing. So we want to include it. So we're going to do minus one there. And then we can close the parenthesis and close it again and hit enter. And so now if I choose just say one day of work, I'm only going to have $750. If I switch this to say four days of work, I'm going to have that sum of these four over here. And later in the video, we'll go over even more useful formulas. But before that, let's take a look at the third scenario, which has the X lookup with the wildcard feature. I know that might not make too much sense. So let's take a look over here. It says over here that we've got Apple and the sales amount. Now the problem is that sometimes you might forget what the name of that company is. So it can be Apple EMEA, Amazon UK instead of just Amazon, Tesla Inc instead of just Tesla. So for that, we can actually use an adjustment with that wildcard feature. So we're going to go to equals X lookup. We want to find that sale amount over here. But first, the lookup value is we're looking for Apple. 
But we're not just looking for Apple, we're looking for Apple with some other data in the end, like EMEA here. So we actually want to put an ampersand and then in quotations here, we're going to put this asterisk and then close those quotations. This is basically saying that, hey, it's going to be Apple and there might be some more words at the end of it. Then we'll hit the comma. For the lookup array, we want to find the company names. So all of these here, control shift down, comma, and the return array is all of the sales amount. So control shift down there. And then we need to tell Excel that we actually want to use the wildcard. So under match mode, hit the comma again, you'll find the wildcard character match, which is the one that we want. So hit the two there, close the parenthesis and just hit on enter. So we see Apple at 8,000, which seems to make sense. I can also change this to just Tesla. And you'll see that it's going to detect that, it, that you're referring to Tesla Inc. And speaking of sales, if you want to learn more about financial statements, you can check out our complete finance and valuation course where we teach financial accounting, finance, valuation, and financial modeling on Excel. First, we cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we get into financial modeling through a three statement model. After that, we begin our valuation phase where you learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Adobe, looking at the real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present your insights using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested in checking it out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Next up, we've got the index match and ampersand combo. See, typically with an index match, you have one column criteria and one row criteria, so two in total. But in this scenario here, you can see that we actually have three criteria, which is the country, the year, and the month. So we're gonna have to find a workaround that. So for that, we're gonna go over here. And first, we're just gonna do a normal index part. So equals index hit the tab key there. And so over here, the array is basically what we want as the result, which are all our sales figures. So we'll go control shift down, control shift right. From here, you're just gonna hit the comma key. And this is when the first match is going to happen. So we'll go match, hit the tab key there. And the lookup value is first, we're looking for Spain, comma, and we're looking for Spain within the range of countries. So control shift down there, comma, and we want an exact match. So we're just going to put a zero there, then hit the second comma. And now it's going to go into the second match, which is the column match. So we'll do match again. But this time we only have one match, but we actually need to put in two criteria. So the year and the month, which are these two over here. So that's when we're actually going to use the ampersand. So first we'll do the 2022, and then hit the ampersand and use the month as well. So you can see what that looks like. We have two lookup values, basically, comma. And for lookup array, as you probably guessed it, we have two now. So first is the years, control shift right, ampersand. And the second is the month, control shift right, and then comma. And we want an exact match. We'll close the parenthesis, close it again, this time for the index. And now we're ready to hit enter. So you can see it says Spain 2022 January is 110,000. So that seems about right there. We can change this to say 2021 and the figure should change to this one here. So it's all looking good. And let me know down in the comments if you have a different suggestion for going about this one. And the final and hardest example we'll look at is the sum filter combo. So let's take a look over here. You can see that we've got the revenue by manager. We basically wanna find out the manager, so for Bill, in this year, how much revenue did he bring in? And you might think, why not just use an index match? But it doesn't quite work here because we actually have Bill several times. And so we want to sum all of these, not just his one first transaction, which is what we'll give you with an index match, but rather we need to sum all of the times that he's on this list. So for that, we're going to go over here to the side. We're going to use a filter first. So we'll go equals filter, hit the tab key there, and the array is the figures we're interested in. So it's gonna be this whole area here. So all of the revenues, control shift down, control shift right, 
comma to include we want to include basically belly within within this range right so we're gonna find all of these control shift down and if these figures here equal to belly then that's when we want to use that filter so we're gonna close up parenthesis and hit enter and basically right now you can see that we've got all of this data here because that's basically whenever there's belly within the data set now we need to further filter this by year as well so we only have those 2020 figures so at the beginning of that filter function we're gonna put in another filter this time for the years so the array we're fine with this area here so all of these comma and now we want them to include when within this year range is gonna be equals to that 2020 range and if that's the case we want it to filter so we'll close a parenthesis and hit enter and so now we only have it for 2020 so only these figures here but obviously we want this as just one cell and not four so we can simply sum all of these together so we're gonna put the sum function in front and then close that at the very end with another parenthesis and hit enter there and so now we have that sum for 2020 for billy which is basically these four numbers and this is all dynamic we can change this to 2021 and it should move accordingly awesome to apply some of these formulas in real world settings check out this video over here to make a financial model or check out our course over here hit that like and that subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one